Quote, the prefix trans in transdisciplinary suggests that such a project transcends the conventional divide between the disciplines involved, going over and beyond their limitations and perhaps creating a new field of study better equipped to tackle some range of problems. For example, one way to interpret the emergence of cognitive science and of science and technology studies as distinctive fields is that the various disciplines studying the mind and the social aspects of technoscience respectively came together to create new concepts, methods, and theories that could not be produced within their progenitor disciplines. Similarly, we might wonder what may emerge if ethics and computing were to become so closely integrated as to produce a new discipline of research and education. Transdisciplinary work requires that practitioners in multiple disciplines use their distinct expertise to craft a new conceptual and methodological framework to tackle a shared inquiry." End quote. Now, a little bit further down on page 649, the author further emphasizes an important point that I think we should also consider in K-12 education. Quote, a transdisciplinary approach to computer ethics would make ethical success at least as important as technical success in computing generally. On this approach, ethical reflection is no longer a supplemental consideration as multidisciplinary interventions positions it, nor is it an aligned but still alien skill set as it is positioned by transdisciplinary initiatives. Rather, on a transdisciplinary vision, Ethical reflection is a core skill for computing, as important as other specialized areas of computing practice. A technological innovation would not be considered technically sound unless it is also ethically responsible to deploy. The conceptual frameworks are not just running in parallel, they have merged, end quote. Yeah, so again, another way that you can think of this, like if you think of it as the noun, that would be the interdiscipline, the intersection of computing and ethics as a new discipline to explore. If that is something that you are interested in, cool, you could totally do that. Another way of thinking of this is like uh, broader than just ethics, but also social justice, which is obviously very related to it is looking at like, uh, what does a socially just computer science education program look like? Or as like the KPOR Center's framework, uh, culturally responsive sustaining computer science education program. What does that look like? How do you merge those together? Like those different perspectives from like scholars like Geneva Gay, Gloria Ladson Billings, Paris and Lean, et cetera, which I've talked about in some other episodes. And I'll link to that in the show notes. For example, episode 40, which is titled Toward a Theory of Culturally Relevant Pedagogy. So the author provides uh, multiple examples of, well, what would this kind of look like in a higher education context? I'm not going to read them off because again, I want you to read this article. I think it's very interesting. And there's a lot of applications that could be relevant to K-12 educators as well as higher education. But there are some problems with this. So, and while there are many advantages in terms of being able to explore things from a holistic manner, not having disciplinary silos, etc. Like the problems again with having the expertise in multiple domains, maybe not even just two domains, but several domains, it becomes harder from an instructional standpoint and from a preparation standpoint. But if you listen to the podcast episodes that I talk about on rhizomatic learning, or even like the affinity space characteristics episode that I link to in the show notes, that kind of gives you an idea of how you might explore from a transdisciplinary standpoint, or even design curricula from a rhizomatic standpoint that supports transdisciplinary learning, even if you are required to do standards in your K-12 classes. So if you wanna dive down that rabbit hole, make sure you check out the links in the show notes. In particular, check out episode 150, which is titled Fostering Intersectional Identities Through Rhizomatic Learning, as well as a panel discussion for episode 75, Rhizomatic Learning with Katherine Bornhurst, John Stapleton, and Katie Henry. Whereas the first episode kind of talks more of a curricular standpoint. The second episode that I just mentioned, that panel discussion talks more of like a pedagogical approach. But then you can also explore episode 89, Applications of Affinity Space Characteristics in Computer Science Education, which kind of talks about how to design a class and facilitate a class that kind of supports this ability to explore many domains or interests simultaneously. But this kind of approach can be difficult, especially if you have like a lot of administrative pressure pressures, pressures from different stakeholders and whatnot in terms of what they expect students to be able to do and learn within your classes. Are they expecting everyone to come out with the same understanding? Are they expecting students to focus just on the technical rather than on a broader understanding of computer science and its impacts of computing. This highlight is from episode 180 of the CSK8 podcast, which you can find on any major outlet. 